Hello, welcome to New Harvest Christian Fellowship, Manchester, England, and thank you for subscribing to our sermon podcast. The message you're about to hear was recorded live at one of our recent services. We pray it will be a blessing to your life, and if you'd like to get in touch with us, we'll give you our contact information at the end of the recording. Thank you once again. Enjoy the preaching. You can, uh, you can have a seat tonight. Amen. It's really good to be in the house of God this evening. Um, just a word about visa. Yeah. You really should have a MasterCard. Because you would just have avoided all those problems. We were out shopping and everyone was panicking. Going to the cash till to try and get money out. We just smoothly went through the petrol station. (laughs) And through the tills with our MasterCard. (laughs) Amen. So, I think God uses MasterCard. (laughs) And you get better rates with MasterCard as well, by the way. Uh, Hallelujah. Amen. So there you go. That's a lesson for you to start with before we even get underway. Amen. We're going to to turn to a scripture in Philippians uh, chapter 2 and verse 5. Amen. If you want to turn there in your Bibles. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. It's a... It's been a nice hot day, amen. I've been doing a little bit of gardening today. Let's just let Steph know that. Uh, I've been going over that patch in the garden that you did a couple of Sundays ago. Um, so, um, but you know what? I've also been looking at the Word of God, amen, which is probably a lot more profitable, amen. You know what? We were meant to be gardeners, did you know that? That's why uh, God put Adam and Eve in the garden and, you know, he told them to grow stuff and, you know, be fruitful and all that stuff. So originally we're supposed to be gardeners. That's why people find gardening a therapeutic type of exercise, amen. People like it, amen. So don't miss out on that if you get a chance to do some gardening. Don't avoid it and say, oh, that looks like hard work. You'll be blessed, amen. Amen. So praise God. Philippians 2 verse 5 It says there, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let this mind be in you, uh, which also was in Christ Jesus. Amen. I've got a picture up there. It's a very famous picture. Amen. A very famous uh, um, sculpture. Amen. By um, a guy called Rodin. He was an artist and a sculptor. And... um, that picture, does anyone know what it's called? Yeah, the, thinker. the Thinker. Amen. The Thinker. And I want to talk about thinking tonight. Amen. And you could uh, uh, term this uh, sermon, if you want to put a title to it, The Loneliness of the Thinking Christian. Amen. You know, I'd like to guess that there's some pretty smart folk in here this evening. Amen. Sarah says amen to that. Amen. People with uh, capable minds and, uh, um, you know, who are quick to learn and to grasp complicated stuff, uh, you know, uh, uh, understand complex theories and ideas. Amen. And I'd also like to uh, bet that when it comes to educational attainment, you would leave me in a cloud of dust. Amen. So there's a lot of... uh, uh, um, brain power in here this evening, I believe. Amen. So here's the question for you, and it might sound a little strange, but is your brain saved? (laughs) Amen. Is your brain saved? Amen. Have you got the mind of Christ? Amen. Because that's what the scripture is telling us, that we need to have the mind of Christ. That means we need to think like Christ. Amen. Or we ought to think in a Christian manner. Amen. It's, uh, uh, if so, then you are a thinking Christian. Amen. A thinking Christian. And that, you know, that message tonight is that it can be lonely being a thinking Christian. Amen. And I say that because I don't think enough Christians 
are actually thinking Christians. Amen. When, when we got saved, when God touched us uh, uh, and brought us out of that miry clay that we were so, uh, the miry clay of sin that we were, that so easily, you know, gripped us and, uh, and, and made our lives, uh, 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 you know, a misery. Amen. Then God saved us body, mind, and spirit. Amen. The whole thing. Amen. Matthew twenty two thirty seven says, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Amen. So, you know, that's pretty critical. All your mind, amen, has to be there, amen. We have to be saved up there in our mind and our brains and our intellect. Amen. Uh, all your mind, uh, that, that's the element that allows us to be aware of things, to think and, and to feel and to, you know, to, to bring thought to bear on issues. Amen. The intellectual center of our being. The place where decisions are made. Amen. Where reasoning takes place. Amen. Where things are understood and where judgments and choices are made. Amen, in our minds. And I think too many Christians neglect the need to think Christian. Amen. Thinking Christian is this. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Bringing every thought, uh, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. What we do is we push our thoughts through the filter, amen, of God's word, amen, through the, like the sieve, amen, we, we pass it through, amen, the filter of God's word and, and uh, those thoughts that don't make it through, then we need to throw out, amen, and those that make it through, amen, that we can uh, live by and use, Amen, whether they are thoughts and ideas or, you know, they're from uh, elsewhere, amen. We, we, we need to test them by the Holy Spirit. Amen, God's given us his spirit, amen, that we might test, amen, the, 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 the things that come into our minds and then through, pass through our lives. First Thessalonians 5 verse 21 says, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. It doesn't say it, but chuck out anything that's not good. Amen. It's not a pastor's job to think for us. Amen. You know, the pastor's uh, job is to think and to bring understanding to the church. Amen. But it's not uh, to think, amen, uh, 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 exclusively of the rest of the congregation. We need to be people as Christians who think. Amen. We think about the issues of life. Amen. We think about our, our, our Christian life and about, you know, the, the stuff that's going on around us every day. And we think, how, how do we see that in a Christian context? Amen. Too many are letting others do the thinking for them. Amen. Your kids do that, don't they? As they're growing up. You know, they want you to think for them. Amen. But you know, we, we shouldn't let that happen. We need to let our children be thinkers, amen, for themselves, amen. Learn their own ideas and, 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 and think, amen, as God would have them think. See, someone once said, if Christians can't communicate as thinking beings, they're reduced to encountering one another only on the shallow level of gossip and small talk. Amen. Do we want to do we want a church? Amen. That's only full of gossip and small talk. Amen. We don't want that. We want people to be thinking Christian stuff. Amen. Discussing things. Amen. You can't grow or develop as a Christian if you don't start thinking about stuff. Amen. Asking questions, getting answers. Amen. Because if you ask a question of God, I want to tell you that he will give you an answer. He'll give you an answer. We went to visit a lady the other day uh, who's just started homeschooling her children. Amen. She was an Asian lady by, by background. And, 
you know, she's a wonderful lady, a wonderful Christian. She's got two beautiful kids. And, and uh, she was sharing a testimony, mainly with Steph, as I was, had to play with the kids, actually. Two lads, see. And they, they, they tired me out, man. They were seven and eight years old, and, and they just drove me crazy. And Steph uh, told me afterwards, I said, you know, that, that she said that she, Rana was sharing a testimony with me. Amen. And, and um, she used to be a Muslim. And she was going to the mosque, amen, like a good Muslim, amen. And then she started asking questions of the imams and, and the leaders in the mosque. And they didn't like her asking questions. They didn't like it, amen. You know, they, they, they don't have the same sort of a, a, a idea of the, the liberty of women in, the, in, in, in that religion, amen. And they began to, you know, uh, uh, just be, you know, not answer her questions, you know, or put her off. And, and she didn't like that. She wanted answers. Amen. Why are we doing this? What's happening here? Uh, she was asking questions. And in the end, she said, right, lay her from the mosque. I'm not going there anymore. They can't answer my questions. You know, and eventually she became a Christian. Amen. Because she asked questions. Amen. She was, she was a thinking person. Amen. To start with. Amen. And she'd be like that as a Christian as well. She will ask questions. She'll get answers. Amen. And God ministers to her. Amen. And, and has shown her, you know, uh, good things. See, it can be a lonely business being a thinking Christian. Amen. How many, how many, just back to the Muslims, how many Muslims just don't ask any questions? Amen. Lots of people who are involved in religion don't ask questions. Amen. Even Christians don't ask questions. Amen. Well, if you don't ask questions, you won't get answers. Amen. And you'll always be wondering. Amen. So it's a lonely position being a thinking Christian in this day and age. Thinking's a process. Amen. That often takes time. It takes research. Amen. It, 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 you know, it's an exercise, isn't it, thinking? Amen. You begin to think and, and then uh, delve into a, a, a subject. Amen. It, you know, it's an exercise in considering stuff, in, in, in reasoning, in making intelligent and rational judgments on, on something. You might have to study, amen, to get the answers. As Christians, we're, we're in a great position to think clearly and to see things in perspective. Amen. Because, amen, the foundation of our thinking is the truth. Amen. What a foundation to get answers from. Straight away, we're dealing with the truth. And that will lead us to good answers. Amen. It will lead us to the correct answers. Amen. And we'll be able to move on forward. So, what marks the Christian mind and Christian thinking? I've got a couple of thoughts tonight. Amen. Firstly, the Christian thinker cultivates an eternal perspective. Amen. He's supernaturally orientated. Amen. The, the eternal destiny of the soul, amen, is brought to bear, amen, uh, on all situations of life, whether they're temporal or, or the eternal considerations. We see them through the eye of eternity. Amen. There's no end, amen. There's no time. Ta- you know, the timeline never ends when we're, we're, we're asking questions and, and, and thinking about stuff. The Christian thinker sees human life and human history held in the hands of God. Amen. We're held in the hands of God. But that's the opposite to secular thought. Amen. There's really nothing beyond this world. Amen. It sees the physical universe as the only reliable source of knowledge and of meaning and of value. Amen. And we, if you came to the Truth Project, we saw a lot of that interesting stuff about that sort of thing. Amen. In the Truth Project. And if you've not seen it, it's worth watching. Amen. Or watching again even. 
So your earthly happiness as a, 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 in secular uh, view or secular thinking is, uh, is only, the only thing that counts is your worldly happiness. Your well-being and your only priority is your temporal life. Amen. You're here and now. Amen. There's no heaven, there's no hell. Amen. There's no final judgment. There's no accountability for your actions. Amen. Ultimately. Amen. And that's how things go. See, secularism is so rooted in this world that it doesn't allow for the existence of anything else. Amen. And you know, secularism can, uh, is, is, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, it can, it, it can embrace atheism and, you know, uh, uh, and humanism and all those things. See, when the Christian mind and the secular mind encounter one another, two things can happen. Amen. The Christian mind can shake the secular, uh, secularist foundations. Amen. Causing him to challenge his thinking. Amen. We can challenge people, you know, and that's what we need to do. You know, some people are just hard to the gospel, but you know what? It's important that we just, you know, with a little earthquake, a little tremor in the the foundations of the secular thinking, amen, can have a big impact. Amen. So that's how we need to be. Or, Or, sadly, on the other hand, the secularist can seduce the Christian mind to a mode which begins to overlook the supernatural. Amen. Are you with me tonight? See, each mindset's got a trump card. The secularist trump card is our carnal, sinful nature. Amen. The secularist can appeal to our base, amen, worldly, uh, uh, you know, thinking or worldly, uh, you know, the, just the, the carnal nature of man. But a Christian has the Holy Spirit. The Christian has God's word. The Bible says the greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So this Christian should win every time. So why do so many Christians fall away? Amen. Why are so many Christians seduced by the world? Amen. It's a seductive place, the world. Amen. But if we've got the Holy Spirit and God's Word on our side, why are we so easily seduced? See, sadly, over a period of time, the dogged and pervasive nature of secularism has overwhelmed the Christian mindset in society. Amen. It's made deep inroads as well, I believe, into the church. Amen. It's interesting that many Christians have got a false concept that, apart from a few moral arguments, uh, the only difference between Christians and non-Christians is our final destination. Amen. The, 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 the Christians believe they go to heaven, and non-Christians believe, or secularists, or atheists, or whatever, you know, they just believe that they go six foot under, and that's it. Amen. So, you know, we can just get on with each other, more or less, and, uh, you know, uh, agreement until death do us part. But that's not how it is. This is part of the secular seduction. Amen. Or, you know, to the clear thinking Christian. Amen. In Christian terms, it's demonic deception. Amen. And the devil wants to deceive you and I, amen, into believing things that are not true. Amen. Into drawing back from the eternal perspective of life. Amen. Listen, what one man said this. Amen. The collision between the Christian mind and a solidly earthbound culture ought to be a violent one. Amen. When when a secular mindset clashes with the Christian mindset, it ought to be a violent one. Amen. Not, uh, you know, uh, uh, a passive happening. Amen. So is that violent uh, 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 collision taking place? Is it happening? Should it be happening? 
Amen. See, we've got so many avenues open to us to let uh, Christian thinking on the issues of life be known. Amen. And, and, and yes, for, for sure, there will be a collision. Amen. There will be a collision. And maybe a violent one at that. Has anyone been involved in a violent collision? I mean, in a car, Sarah's been involved in a violent collision quite recently. That's how it is. Boom. Amen. And that's, you know, the two forces are, 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 are naturally opposed to one another. Amen. Matthew 11 verse 12 says, the violent take it by force. Amen. We're not involved in a passive debate. Amen. We're not involved in, in just an intellectual argument. Amen. We're involved in something that's uh, overwhelmingly spiritual. It's a battle between good and evil. Amen. These, some, these sometimes get played out in a public arena. There was something that took place yesterday in the Houses of Parliament. Listen to this. Amen. Just to, uh, you know, make it relevant. There was a heated debate about the Northern Irish abortion laws in Parliament yesterday. Amen. Uh, uh, abortion is basically illegal in Northern Ireland. It's the only part of the, uh, the United Kingdom that, it, it, that that's the case. And a group of Westminster MPs think that they should be able to impose Britain's liberal abortion laws onto the people in Northern Ireland. Amen. And this is what a Northern Irish MP, Sammy Wilson, said in the debate. He, was, he said he wasn't embarrassed by the law in Northern Ireland, saying that there were people living today who would otherwise have been discarded and put in a bin before they were ever born. I mean, can you disagree with that? There's no disagreement there, I don't think. Amen. His remark drew criticism from other MPs. Amen. And the SMP's Hannah Bardell later said, this was a disgusting way to describe the choices that women have to make. Amen. I think he was right. I think he was right and truthful. Amen. And she was wrong. But fortunately for you and I, Ms. Bardell probably will never have to make that choice because she's a lesbian. So there we go. Amen. But this is how, this is what's going on. This is taking place right in, in, before our eyes. This is, that's a, that is an argument about between good and evil. There's a battle there that there is no other way to describe it. We're all involved in a battle between good and evil and perhaps that we should exercise some aggression in our Christian thinking. Amen. amen. That's one amen. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> See, there was once a time, amen, when there was some sort of general deference shown to Christian thought in this country. Amen. Uh, and, and uh, you know, to Christian principles. But, but now Christianity isn't seen like that. Amen. Uh, Christianity is thought to be like anachronistic and, and outdated thinking. Amen. And, uh, and it's a barrier. Amen. It, it's holding back. Amen. The progress of society. Amen. Towards, uh, you know, their enlightened path to social justice and human rights and equality and all that stuff. Amen. But there's so many types of... And uh, you know, there are so many topics and subjects that take a wholly different perspective when moved from secular thought and outlook to the eternal outlook. Amen. Amen. From a worldly and temp from worldly and temporal thinking to biblical and Christian thoughts. Amen. Fundamental issues of life and death, thoughts about abortion, amen, and euthanasia and things like that. The diametrically opposite. Uh, paths of thinking in terms of the ethics and the morality, amen, between Christians and non-Christians. See, the, the Christian who takes biblical truth and eternity into account is able to clearly answer questions that are unanswerable 
or, or at best, uh, you know, conjecture or guesswork to the secularists. Amen. Answers are, you know, subjects like uh, suffering and disease and injustice and, and poverty, the meaning and purpose of life. The secularists can't answer those questions. Amen. Amen. Can't give any hope. Amen. Amen. But you know what? We can tell the individual that, that, that they, they do have, uh, 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 you know, that they, they, they have design. Amen. Uh, they're here by design and for a purpose. And not by random chance and the lottery of life. The secularist has no answer. Amen. To the basic fundamental question is, why am I here? Amen. They don't have any answers or they've got a multiple of answers. We've just got one answer. Amen. Secondly, another thing that marks a Christian mind and thinker is this, is awareness of evil. Amen. A lot of people don't recognize evil. Amen. Christian, tonight, is your, is your thinking aware of evil? Amen. Is, is the church clear about what's evil and, and what's good? The secular world certainly no longer knows what is good and what is evil. Amen. It, it might sort of agree that, like, murdering somebody's uh, you know, uh, not good, or, or 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 robbing someone at gunpoint, or or you know, uh, 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 you know, the actions of groups like ISIS, you know, those would definitely probably still be considered evil. But it doesn't go much further than that. Amen. It doesn't go much further uh, uh, than that. Amen. And we live in a world where Isaiah's prophecy in chapter 520 has really come to pass. And he says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's turning everything around, isn't it? Turning things on, on its head. Amen. The Antichrist is the, is the embodiment of evil. Amen. And this, that's an antichrist spirit. Amen. And it's loose in the world today in a big way and it's growing. See, you either take a biblical standpoint on evil or a secular view. And the secular view is coming, becoming incrementally, slowly by slowly, and it's probably speeding up a lot, it's becoming more anti-Christian. Amen. So if you don't have a proper awareness of evil, then we can't help people who are involved in evil. Amen. I had a friend who was an alcoholic. This was before I was saved. Amen. And he was messed up. And, you know, I wasn't too far behind him. But he was really messed up. And he, he was like, it was killing him. And, you know, I wanted to help him, but how could I help him? Amen. I was doing, I was just a few short ste- steps behind him, amen, but I saw his need, but I couldn't do anything about it. Come for a drink and I'll help, try to help you. But that's, that's the world. Amen. But if we don't have an awareness of what's right and wrong, how can we help people who are involved in, 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 in you know, wrong stuff? The Christians should be conscious that the universe is a battleground between good and evil. Amen. Just because we live in a stable society, amen, where the rule of law generally prevails, amen, and, you know, it doesn't mean that we can leave it to the government, amen, of the, you know, the government of the day to legislate what's good and what's bad. Amen. It was the government of the day that crucified Jesus. Amen. It was the imperial rulers from Rome. Amen. I'm not going anywhere with this. That condemned Jesus. And, and, and yeah, it was the religious hierarchy. Amen. That put Jesus on the cross. So we don't need to hand, amen, right and wrong over to the authorities. Amen. To, to, to the government. Amen. They condemned Jesus. Amen. See, worldly governments are just that, worldly. 
Amen. And the further they move away from Christian thought, amen, and foundation, then the more worldly they become. And with that, the more worldly they become, the more evil they become. Amen. And that's the direction we're traveling in. Have you got a clear awareness of evil in your mind? Amen. And, and, and are you willing to call evil, evil? Amen. Thirdly, amen, I hope I'm not going on for too long. The Christian thinker has a clear conception of the truth. Amen. And, you know, we've, we've gone over this in the Truth Project, but just a couple of thoughts. The marks of truth conceived in the Christian mind are these. Firstly, amen, the truth is supernaturally grounded. Amen, the foundation for truth is supernatural. It's not developed, amen, by mankind. You know, we haven't been developing truth over the millennium and we're closer to it now. Amen, it's not like that. Truth isn't the construction of man. Amen. It's not, you know, it's not elected by majority vote. Amen. We can't have a referendum on what the truth is. They've tried that a couple of times in different countries and, and they've failed to get the right answer. Amen. The truth's objective, not subjective. Amen. It's not, not built on man's opinions. It's the outcome, amen, of, of it's, it's not the outcome of a government consultation. We don't make the truth. Amen. Truth comes, amen, by revelation. And then inquiry. And it's strictly authoritative. Amen. Once, once the truth's there, then that's it. It's not a matter of personal choice. Amen. We can't choose it. Amen. All those issues, amen, that we see, you know, that they're a matter of right and wrong. One man said this, a suitable image of the truth would be that of a lighthouse lashed by the elemental fury of undisciplined error. Amen. Those in error will tell us that our biblical truths are old-fashioned, outdated, bigoted and hateful. Amen. The, The Bible's bigoted and hateful now. Christians, amen, who've done so much good in the world, amen, they're bigoted and hateful now. That's how we're we're labelled by many. But truth is, the truth, sorry, is neither fashionable or unfashionable. Amen. It's simply the truth. Amen. It's not not the flavour of the week or, or, you know, it's not out of style. It's simply the truth. It doesn't have, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, a best by, a uh, use by date on it. Amen. It doesn't. It's not like that. The truth is like Jesus Himself. Amen. And you know what? I seem to shoe on this scripture into every sermon. Amen. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I love that verse. Amen. It's such a reassuring verse of scripture, isn't it? Amen. When everything else is changing around us, Jesus Christ is stable. Um, Probably lastly, what marks a Christian mind and Christian thinking is this. It's concern for the person. Amen. There's a parable in uh, Matthew 18, verse 10 to 14. It's the parable of the lost sheep. Amen. And Jesus highlights his concern for the lost. Amen. He highlights his concern for the lost in general, saying that he came to seek and save the lost. But then for the individual in particular, as he went, amen, said the the shepherd would leave his 99 sheep and go after the one that went missing. Amen. The one, the individual is important to Jesus. Amen. Our Christian thinking can be crystal clear on eternity, on the nature of evil and truth and all that, but it's no good unless we have God's heart for the person. Amen. And God's highest concern is for his highest creation. Amen. And the Bible tells us that we were created in the image of God. Amen. A reflection of God's character. Amen. Corrupted, yeah, but still a reflected. A, a reflection. We, we, you know, in God's eyes, we're highly esteemed and valuable. 
Amen. The secularist doesn't see things like that. The secularist sees man as, you know, a biological being. Amen. Destined to be born, to exist for a short time, and then die, and that's it. No future hope, no eternal destiny, no ultimate accountability, no future. Amen. It's just eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Amen. Get what you can while you can. Amen. You know, they, they might try to dress it up, you know, with a bit of philanthropy and, and charity and stuff like that. But it's get what you can while you can. Amen. That's the nature of fallen man. Secularist thinking is selfish thinking. Amen. It's temporal thinking. There's no genuine purpose to life except to indulge ourselves for a little while. Amen. That, that was me before I was a Christian, just to indulge myself for a short period of time. I didn't know when the game was going to be up. Amen. So we were doing stuff, drugs and, and you know, all the rest of it. Amen. Uh, that's how life was. That's the secular, secular life. It creates a dog-eat-dog world. Amen. It creates dangerous philosophies. Stuff like Marxism and fascism and socialism and all that stuff that strips away the individual, amen, and, and, and release people of personal responsibility. We're responsible for our own actions, folks, and our own lives. Amen. It takes away freedom of thought. It allows crazy ideas like legalizing drugs. Amen. Prosti legalizing prostitution. Legalizing same-sex marriage. It tears down God's given boundaries and puts up their own ungodly boundaries. Amen. But you know what? Secularism can't completely eliminate the image of God in mankind. Amen. The scripture tells us that man's got eternity in his heart. Amen. In Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11, let me read, he says, He has also set eternity in the human heart. Amen. And, and no one can get rid of that. Amen. And as Christians, you know, with a concern for the person, there's always this hope, amen, to which, for, to which we can appeal. That hope in people's inner, you know, that inner longing you know, sometimes buried deeply, amen, by, you know, hopelessness and failure and, uh, and bitterness and abuse and all the things that take place in life, amen. But it's there, deep down inside, that longing, amen, for eternity, amen. People know, amen, you know, even people who dismiss, amen, uh, with a stroke, amen, that they just uh, disappear when they die and rot in the grave and, and that's it. They don't believe that, you know. There's something inside that says there is something eternal about mankind. Do we have got a soul? Amen. That we're, we're, we're eternal beings. Amen. And we can let people know because of that that there's hope. There's a God who cares. There's salvation close at hand. Amen, as we just finish. I know that I had eternity in my heart. Amen, before I was saved. Amen, I ignored it for a long time. You know, I kept just pushing it away. Pushing it away, no, later. But you know, it always kept coming back to me. Amen. You, you wouldn't be saved. You wouldn't be a Christian today if you didn't have that eternity in your heart. Amen. There's something about the human being. Amen. You can ignore it. Amen. But it's never going to go away. I went to church when I was a kid. I heard about Jesus. I went through a lot of self-inflicted pain and heartbreak. But God was gracious. Amen. And all we have to do, if we're thinking Christians, is pass that grace on to others. And you know what? God will do the rest. Amen. Amen. Let's just bow our heads for a moment or two as we close this evening. Hallelujah. Amen.
God's good tonight, amen. It can be lonely being a Christian. It can be even lonelier being a thinking Christian. But you know what? We really need to put our minds into gear sometimes. Amen. And start thinking, uh, uh, formulating, amen, the ideas that God wants to give us. Getting the answers that God has. If you've been blessed or challenged by today's preaching and you'd like to get in touch with us, the easiest way is via our website at www.newharvestuk.com. You can email us at info at newharvestuk.com or look us up on Facebook or Twitter. You can call us on 0161 278 6305 or you can even write to us at 194 Chapel Street, Salford, Manchester, M36BY. We'd also like to extend a warm welcome for you to join us at any of our services. However you might be feeling and whatever you might have been told, know this. God loves you and there's a place for you in his kingdom. God bless you. We're praying for you. And once again, thank you for listening.